what if this is work for, we have two different, two different equations for work. We have this one, but we also have another equation for work. What is that equation, please? Sergey. Changing kinetic energy. Ah, okay. Uh, that's not where I'm going. We'll put that right up here and we'll do that in a minute. I want to talk about that. That's not actually quite correct, and I'll talk about why in just a moment. I need the, another equation for work, please. Bill. Uh, F R cosine theta. So we have two different equations for work. We'll get to that one in a minute. What's the difference between these two equations for work, please? Sierra. Well, it's, it's a constant force or not. Right. Only has to do with whether the force is constant or not. For this one, we have a constant force. For this one, we have a non-constant force. OK. Work equals change in kinetic energy. Let's do the three different types of mechanical energy first before we get to that. Three different types of mechanical energy. Please name me all three and their equations. Catherine. Uh, kinetic energy equals Spring potential energy, what's the subscript? E for elastic. E for elastic potential energy. Looking at these equations, H is what? Uh, well, I don't Fair enough. Uh, K is the spring constant, X. What is X, Nick? Distance from the equilibrium. The distance from the equilibrium position. Now, what's interesting here is we actually have more than these three now that we've finished uh, the mechanics. So, who can give me a couple of more? We, we can do them now, but we'll get to specifics in a little bit. Other types of mechanical energy. Um, rotational kinetic energy. This is translational kinetic energy. We also have rotational kinetic energy. What is the equation for rotational kinetic energy? Um, Bohan. Um, I don't remember. Fair enough. Rotational kinetic energy. Uh, we'll, we'll just go here. How many fortnights do you have so you have to have it memorized? Six. Six seven. Six seven. Six seven. Good. <laughs> Message. Um, one half i omega squared. One half i omega squared. We also have another type of mechanical energy. Meg. Was it like a, also the like gravitational potential? It is gravitational potential energy. Uh, it be g m1 m2 over r. Very close. Emily? Negative. Negative. Oh. Okay. Uh, okay, so we've done all those. Let's come, return back to this equation for work equals change in kinetic energy. Sarah Jane, I'm sorry, it's very close, but not quite right. Fix it. Miller? Network. It is the network which equals the change in kinetic energy. We have two other equations which also have to do with energy none of which are on your equation sheet. I need to know both of them. We've got them. One or the other. Emily. Work due to friction equals a change in mechanical energy. Work due to friction equals a change in mechanical energy. And the last one. Tim? Mechanical energy initially. Conservation of mechanical energy. When can we use these equations? Uh, Hamza, network equals change in kinetic energy. Bless you. Say again? Always. This is always true. Gary, work to friction equals change in mechanical energy. Uh, when there's no force applied. When there's no force applied and mechanical energy initially equals mechanical energy, fine. Jenkins? No friction. Potterella? Or force applied. And no force applied. So please realize that none of these three are on your equation sheet. Power. Not to be confused. Uh, let's do this real quick. We have three P's. We have this one, this one, and this one. We have a capital P, a row, and a lowercase p. Capital P, Nitish, stands for? Power. 
Lower or rho stands for density. And uh, lowercase p. Momentum. Momentum. So be careful. I know when I write them on the board, it's hard to tell the difference. Uppercase rho and lowercase p. We have power. Uh, give me any equation for power. Uh, Bailey. Okay, we'll put that one over here, and it is not quite force times velocity. Uh, Nick. Uh, it's the dot product. It's the dot product in force of force and velocity, which means it's FV times what, Catherine? Uh, cosine theta. Cosine theta. Coming, going backwards a little bit to the definition of power doorstep. Uh, I don't know how many times I'm going to accept. I don't know, Mohit. <laughs> Zach. <laughs> Zach. Uh, derivative of work as a function of time. So if you recall, work, if we have a constant velocity or a constant force, is F R uh, times the cosine of theta divided by T. R over T is going to be your velocity. Uh, in this equation, theta is the angle between what and what, Sarah Jane? Uh, the force and uh, r. Either r or the velocity, depending on whether you're talking about the work equation or the power equation. It doesn't matter either way. Again, remember that you can rearrange this equation right here, power equals the derivative of work as a function of time, into what, Mr. P? Just take and rearrange this equation, you get work is equal to the integral of power as a function of time. I will point out, I just want to take a moment and come back to this one. If the network it was changing kinetic energy so often, people just forget about this one. So please remember that one. It comes up in, at times when you don't remember it at all. <laughs> ah, sorry, I don't know how to say that. Um, there is an equation which is not on your equation sheet, which, which is true whenever you have a conservative force. Tim. Is it negative du over dx? Is equal to? Force. Is equal to the force. So notice, the force is equal to the negative of the derivative of the energy, potential energy associated with that force with respect to position. Just as a simple example, the force of a spring then is going to be equal to the negative derivative of the energy associated with the spring with respect to position. The energy associated with the spring is going to be uh, 1 half kx squared. So we get the derivative of that, the 1 half comes out k derivative of x squared with respect to x is going to be 1 half k, lost a negative, negative uh, multiplied by 2x or negative kx, which of course is the equation for the force of a spring, just to use it as a simple example. Center of mass. We have two different equations for center of mass. Please give me one or the other, Eugene. Oh, is it? Oh. One, one over m is equal x dt. Close. Somebody fix it. Uh, huh? X dm. Remember, this is 1 over m is equal to the integral of x, the position with respect to mass. Uh, the first 1 over m, what is that m in the equation, Dorstetter? That is the total mass. Notice that that's the total mass. This is for an object that has shape. In order to solve this equation, generally your first step is to do what? Meg? Say again? Something with the density. Something with the density. OK, let's talk about density. We have three different types of densities. Gary, give me the symbols for all three types of densities. The P or rho. Rho. <laughs> the lowercase, oh, uh, M over V. OK. 
We got this one. We got rho equals m over v. Rho is technically what? What is the name of that density, Tyler? Uh, volumetric density. Volumetric mass density, because you could also have something called volumetric weight density. You could also have volumetric charge density. Don't you worry, we will. Uh, we also have one that's equal to mass per unit area, and we have one that's equal to mass per unit length. What are either the symbols or the names, the Silva, of some of these. I think for the um, area density is a lowercase sigma. It's a lowercase sigma. And then for linear mass density, it's a lambda. It's a la lowercase lambda as well. So we have volumetric mass density, surface mass density, and linear mass density. So yes, one of the things that you're doing when you solve this equation is you are choosing which one of those to work with and working with it. True. But we usually don't solve this equation directly. We do something else first. Hot or hot? So if you use like volumetric mass density, it's also equal to dm over dv. Volumetric mass density is equal to m over v, which is also equal to dm over dv. We take the object and we split it into an infinite number of infinitesimally small masses, dm, which all have a volume dv. Eric. When would be a time when you use a uh, surface mass density? This one I put in for completeness sake. We don't actually use it as far as mass is concerned, but we use it uh, when we come to charge quite often. So I put it in there basically as a placeholder so that you have something for when we get to charge that it makes sense to you. Okay. But uh, you are correct that as of this point we have not used surface mass density yet. Okay. Kat? Uh, you have to change the limit. Yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry, say again? You have, you have to change like the... Um... The issue is we have x and dm. We are taking an integral of something that's linear with respect to mass. So the whole goal here with uh, rho is equal to dm over dv is to substitute something in so that we have it in terms of dx, or taking the integral with respect to x. But we have yet to determine the first thing we need to figure out when we use this equation. Zach? Uh, well, that would be a separate. This one here is for an object with shape. We will get to the equation for um, particles, which is a slightly different thing. First thing you have to do is you have to find the mass total. What is the equation for the mass total, Tyler? <laughs> Uh, density, wait, let's see, no? Help him out. The equation for the mass total, Jenkins. Integral of dm. It's just the integral of dm. And it ends up being highly redundant because you solve this, I mean, you're still taking the integral of something with respect to dm, and you just basically do it the same way, so you end up doing it twice. Now, we need to talk about uh, multiple objects. So we have uh, point particles. What is the equation for the x center of mass of point particles? <sighs> Gary. M1, x1, plus m2, x2. And it like goes on over m1 plus m2. Goes on. You're basically going point by point and saying we have the mass of our first particle and its position relative to some uh, zero line or zero point and the total mass on the bottom. Good. So, oh, be aware that this equation, the x center of mass equation, is not on your equation. 